I shall tell you a few words about the beginning of injustice, the cultural destruction of the occupied area of Cyprus. We estimate 15,000 to 20,000 icons have been removed. Several dozen major frescoes and mosaics have been segmented for sale abroad and some destroyed forever. I heard about this young lady here in Holland from Cyprus who had a big heart for her country. The Dutch art dealer approached me with a proposition to deliver many of our important stolen treasures. If it wasn't for her, the operation wouldn't have taken place in Munich. The Dutch art dealer directly implicated the possessor, which culminated in the arrest of the possessor and discovery of many more artifacts of Cypriot origin. So she took a certain risk, but it resulted in a lot of pieces going back to, to Cyprus. As a Cypriot, a refugee from Famagusta, and speaking for the people of Cyprus, we have lost many, many things since 1974. However, there can be no greater loss than that one's culture. Thank you. <laughs> to help you understand my narrative today, please allow me to share with you a few snapshots from my life. Imagine me as a 14-year-old schoolgirl at my hometown in Famagusta, where Shakespeare staged Othello. We lived just a block away from the Mediterranean Sea, I was lucky enough to have spent my early years in a loved family full of rituals and tradition. We began and finished our day with prayers using the icons to communicate with the divine. Saint Andrew was a favorite saint for my mom, and we prayed daily to him. This was my childhood, the mosaic of my harmonious life. In 1974, I went to bed as a free teenager and woke up in the midst of war and horror. War devastated me, shattered my dreams, and all I gained was a new identity, one of a refugee. Just like millions of other refugees around the world, we had no choice but to start making new lives elsewhere. In my case, Life took me to the UK and then to the Netherlands, where I started an IT business in my 20s. In 1987, the Cypriot authorities who heard of my successes appointed me as honorary consul in Holland. A strange phone call changed my life. It was from the mysterious Dutch art dealer you saw on the video, Michel von Rijn. In the oldest cafe in The Hague, he showed me some images which profoundly shocked me. Picture of mosaics or St. Andreas. He showed me these pictures of the mosaic of St. Andrew, 6th century and unique worldwide. Millions of small stones collected from all around the island assembled together to create the images of Christ and his apostles. St. Andrew was on sale. His naive face and all other apostles hacked out of a war with brute force by those who wanted to make profit for what for us 
the people of Cyprus are priceless. I soon realized what I was seeing, mosaics from the Kanakaria church from the sixth century. In other words, art from the dawn of Christian history, some of the oldest religious images in the world. Up to that point, I lived as a silent witness of the war. Seeing those mosaics made me thirsty for justice, and my personal mission as a campaigner against the looting and trafficking was born. My passion has led me to many different places around the globe, from police stations in Germany to universities in Japan and to parliaments of several countries, including this one. I have received help and encouragement from museum curators, art historians, collectors, possessors. I worked with Interpol, clerics, controversial dealers, but at the end, more than 200 works of stolen religious art traveled back home to Cyprus. A drop in the ocean compared to the thousands of arts still missing. The emotional value of these artifacts are beyond measure. In 1997, I worked with Interpol and the German police and we staged the sting operation in Munich with the help of Orion. 5,000 artifacts were found by the police in Aydin Dickmann's apartment in Munich, hidden behind double walls and double ceilings. St. Andrew was discovered, but he was a fake. The real one is still missing. For 30 years, Aydin Dickmann says that von Rhein controls the mosaic, where von Rhein claims that Dickmann controls it. There they are. We have a picture of Dickmann holding the mosaic and his former partner for Rhine holding the lower part of the figure of Christ, which is also still missing. Yet, the dealers remain free and neither of these mosaics are featured on any police list as missing. I know how a refugee or immigrant from Afghanistan, Iraq, Syria or Mali feels seeing wealthy Europeans buying symbols of their homes identity, history, memories, and faith. This is why now I want to share my network and resources to help others protect their cultural heritage, but don't know how. If the system for monitoring looted art was working well with optimal cooperation between police, lawyers, museums, and ordinary people, then we would have found St. Andreas by now and brought him home. This is my dream. Give every looted art a face and a soul, a voice to tell their truth with their silence. Let us create together a network of cultural crime watchers worldwide, because that is the only way to fight united against the culture in Christ. We know that such a mechanism of collecting anonymous tips from the public is needed right now, as Iraqi immigrants reached out to us for help. We must help them to prevent their cultural heritage from being sold to wealthy individuals worldwide, like the Cypriot arts were. They need guarantees, if they collaborate with us, that their artifacts will go back to Iraq after the conflict and not stay in our museums. In war zones, acts of cultural desecration can entrench bitterness and hatred. That is often their purpose. However, acts of restitution or respect for cultural heritage can be important in rebuilding trust, peace, and reconciliation. Giving back stolen treasures to us refugees is an acknowledgement for our losses and a symbol of hope that will resonate deep in our souls. Join us at Walk of Truth, our NGO, so together we can convert the silent witnesses of war and destruction into envoys of peace. We cannot do this alone, as the task is much bigger than all of us together, as we see daily in the news. Thank you very much, and thank the organizers for this opportunity.